All right, guys, the second lecture in this unit is going to be about soil formation, which is related to that chemical and mechanical weathering because once rock is broken down, um, it is created or becomes part of soil. So what is soil made of? So it has four main components. So it has that weathered rock, whether it's chemically or mechanically weathered. Then it has an organic matter called humus. Now, organic matter can come from dead plants, dead organisms, okay? And so what happens is decomposers like bacteria and fungus, they're gonna be responsible for breaking down that organic matter and it becomes part of the soil. And then it also has air and water as part of it as well. So this organic material, just so you guys are aware, this is what is going to help with plant growth. Um, and it, without it, it would not be able to grow. So soil is going to be formed from that weathered rock and organic material. It's a mixture. Now there's a few important terms that you guys need to know when we're talking about soil. And we're only going to touch on the basics of soil. Um, and that is parent material. So parent material is where the soil forms from, okay? And it's localized, okay? Um, and that parent material is typically the bedrock. So on the next slide, you're going to see an image um, of the horizons or the profile of soil. And you'll be able to understand what this means so that soil originates from the bedrock or its parental material. Um, and we call this residual soil, okay? So it's localized, it's from the same bedrock, okay? So it's parental soil. Then we have another type of soil that's called trans transported soil. So this soil was formed in one place and is carried elsewhere, typically by erosion, wind, water, glaciers, etc. And if it is transported, if it's moved from a different location to another, that's when we give it the term transported soil. So here's a cross section of the soil layer or a profile of what it looks like. And so each layer is going to be given um, a letter and it's called a horizon. So up here we have our horizon A. Sometimes you'll see these two separated, sometimes you won't. Um, this is going to include the topsoil. It's mostly going to be humus and some fine weathered rocks. Okay, B, you're going to see this mostly weathered rock. You might also see some organic material that is leached down from horizon A. Horizon C, you're going to see that broken bedrock. Okay, so you're seeing very large rocks. And then you're actually going to hit down. So below Horizon C is going to be the bedrock, which is solid rock. Okay, so you can kind of see Horizon C is that parent material. Okay, so this soil, if it is residual, it's come from this layer. Okay, now if this is transported, it is not from this parent material. So again, your horizons um, are going to include that topsoil, which is the humus, the organic matter, which contains carbon. Then you have your weathered rock, which is inorganic, meaning it does not contain carbon. And then you have some weathered rock. You also have some leaching of that organic material. Um, and then down here, you have your broken bedrock. You might have some organic material that has come down to this level. But again, as you go down, the organic material goes down as well. So here's some cool pictures of where you can actually see the different um, horizons on this particular profile. Now typically too, the color of the soil is darker as it is because that humus gives it that earthy dark color um, with that organic material. And as you move down, you're just seeing um, basically inorganic matter or rocks. This is kind of an interesting fact. So it takes about 100 to 400 years for one centimeter of topsoil to form. So this is a long process. This isn't happening overnight. So one really important thing to realize as we go into talking about erosion as well is that plants are going to hold that soil together and they're going to prevent it from being transported somewhere else. Now, there's a lot of controversy that goes on um, 
with taking plants out where it used to be to put in things like housing communities. And now there's nothing to stop the erosion from happening. So you might see flooding in areas that you haven't seen before. Um, after a wildfires, once plants and trees are completely um, burned, you'll see a lot of erosion as well. And that's because there aren't any organic plant matter to prevent that from happening. So now let's talk about mass movements, which is going to be movement of soil. Now these are talking about um, the force of gravity. The, so the first one is called a creep. Now a creep is very slow. So you're not going to be able to notice it with your naked eye. You're gonna notice it by landmarks. So trees, fence posts, telephone poles, um, et cetera. You can actually see that they're tilted downward and that's because the soil is actually moving from the force of gravity down the side of the mountain or the hill. So here's just showing you, it's actually creeping down the side of the hill. And you can see it again by the curvature of tree trunks or poles that are, um, look like they might be falling over. Now we're gonna talk about landslides. So this is rapid movement. So a creep is very slow. You're not gonna notice it um, except for by landmarks. Um, so this is gonna be a rapid mass movement. So down a usually it's gonna be down a very steep slope. So um, some terms that you might have heard before, an avalanche. So this can be of ice and snow, but it can also be made out of soil or a slump. So a slump is an avalanche, but on a much smaller level. So you can see this along roadways that cut into the side of hills. A lot of times um, where slumps or avalanches are prevalent, um, they will actually put like fencing or um, walls to try to prevent these from coming onto roadways. So you can kind of see how the side of this hill has just completely come down in one rapid movement. Again, you can see a landslide here. Again, you're seeing that side just completely. In this case, it probably um, could fall into the ocean or will fall into the ocean, I should say. And then we have an avalanche of snow and ice. Again, these are all going to be um, because of the force of gravity on whatever matter it is. So snow, ice, or soil. <coughs> That's an unpleasant sight, but again, another avalanche. So again, the force of the soil, um, one is great, so it can actually damage, it can actually move houses too. Then we have mud flow or lahar. So lahar is going to be movement of mud down a volcanic um, mountain. So it's very fast, um, very dangerous, and it's going to be that movement in, of water saturated soil, which you guys know um, as mud. So that's where the term mudslide comes in. Um, an important thing to know is that even we notice rapid mass movement, okay? Um, it's going to not move as much material as the creep. So overall, creeps are going to move much more soil mass than a rapid movement does. All right, and that is it on soil formation and then soil movement. If you guys have any questions about anything, just make sure you email me, call me, or we can Zoom or Skype. Thanks, guys.